Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Nine Hope Podcast with David and Ian. David, what's going on, brother? Another Friday. Some hot goss for you. That's right, dude. That's right, man. We got some cool stuff going on. Um, I saw you had sent over some things about the Tom, the the roast of Tom Brady. <laughs> some things about it? NBA. I haven't watched any of that, so I wanted to. Like either. I haven't watched NBA. I haven't watched the roast of Tom Brady. I heard that was fire, though. I heard it was hilarious. I heard it's some brutal. people talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it was kind of ruthless. Um, yeah, I, I, I heard some different things about it, bro. Is, was there anything that stood out to you like that's that's worthwhile talking about? Or was it I, – dude, I see it's up on Netflix. Is it yeah. worth checking out? I mean, like I turned it on last night kind of late thinking I wouldn't watch my, It's like three hours long. Ooh. And I got through like two and a half hours of it, and I looked at my phone, and it was like twelve thirty at night. Okay. So it That's was wild. very entertaining. Um, Gronk got shit on a lot. Rob Gronkowski. Did he? I yeah, heard the just... owner did too a little bit, and Tom Brady like stood up for him. Yeah, he said, "Hey, don't say that shit." They <laughs> joked about his getting like jerked off at massage parlors, <laughs> and they're like, "Hey, don't don't say that." I, apparently, if you get roasted, there's like a couple things that you can tell him not to say but he was a good sport about it i mean they made fun of him and questioned his sexuality a lot um tom yeah. brady yeah they thought tom brady was gay yeah really they're just saying like it's okay to come out now like oh wow and i said, didn't even know that that was a joke yeah and they apparently his wife like left him for like a jujitsu instructor oh yeah i heard about that yeah and just like what were you thinking that i mean it was pretty ruthless ruthless uh but that nikki glazer girl she did an awesome job she was by far the the best set um i love it burt kreischer and tom segura who i think tom segura is really funny but they came up and did like a like a powerpoint presentation and it was horrible that's brute yeah that's brutal i heard uh like kim kardashian was presenting and stuff too she kind of that wasn't that great though she got kind of shit on that's that's great i love that i love that so yeah, I love it. She said uh, Kevin her, Hart man. was rude or something, and how how small he is makes him the smallest black dick she's ever seen. <laughs> That's great. That's great, dude. That's exactly what we're looking for. You know what I mean? Yeah, but so. NBA Anthony Edwards, that guy's my favorite. I'm not even like, big on the NBA. I played fantasy basketball the last two years with a bunch of Canadian guys. Uh, but watching the playoffs is like, I wish they played like that all year because it would be very entertaining. Really? Yeah, they're getting after it. And the Nuggets are very good, but the Timberwolves are just playing unreal defense. And like I'm telling you, Anthony Edwards is like a little Michael Jordan. Really? Yeah. I've seen some of the clips. Uh, like I've seen his name. I've seen some of the clips. He's nasty. Comparing him to MJ, dude. So that's wild. Yeah. He's <clears> doing <throat> it. And he's got to deal with Adidas. He just released his first shoe. Completely sold out everywhere. That's big. Yeah, He's a show the Ant Man. The Ant Man, dude. Of course, yeah. of course, I do. That's great. We got so talking about some baseball stuff, man. Uh, you know, some of the biggest news that we've been blessed with. We've been talking about it for a while. We've been wondering when we are going to see Paul Skeens, and it has been announced this week that he will be debuting this weekend against the Cubs, and the hype around him, dude, and Obviously, where he was drafted, coming out of LSU, like it, it, he's being compared to Steven Strasburg with his stuff and how much hype is being uh, generated about him, dude. What do you got on that? What are you, uh, what are you anticipating seeing? Yeah, I think that's a really good, fair comparison. Um, Strasburg, I was in college, I believe, when he was getting drafted, and I mean, he was like the first, like major major pitching project prospect that i've been a part of i guess um but i think skeens checks all those boxes just a little different stuff like skeens has that more sweeping slider Strasburg yeah. had the curveball but i think skeens throws harder i mean there's some stat out there that like there's been so many like 100 mile an hour fastballs thrown this year in the big leagues and like skeens would make up for like half of that <laughs> he's got he's got a huge majority of them right yeah it's it's wild but i think 
you never know. I mean, big league debut. I know that guy is. He seems confident. He's cocky. Uh, he knows his worth. But with him just dominating AAA like he has, I think it will transition well. Got to. Yeah, he'll Got be. To. He'll be fine. Cubs are. He's gonna debut against the Cubs, right? Like. Yeah, been dude. Playing all right. That's. They they were in first for a little bit. I'm not sure where they're at right now, but. Um, yeah, he he's been lights out triple A. Uh not even a one. So he's got a zero point nine nine ERA. Uh in Indy, dude, forty five strikeouts and twenty seven innings pitch, bro. Um, it's obviously going to be awesome to see what he's gonna be able to do. Does all this translate? I guess he developed a new pitch, a splinker. Yeah, splinker. Which is That's wild, cool. you know, but fa- dude, fastball with velo and a split is obviously nasty, not just having the hard slider off of it. Um that that should be great, dude. But this is his first full season, dude. Yeah. This is his first full season. So I if, they let him go over seventy five pitches, though. Yeah. Yeah. So he maxed out at seventy five pitches, six yeah. innings this year, dude. So they're going to be calling him up in his first full season, and so he's he's getting acclimated to being on the five day rotation, right? That that's a huge difference from yeah. coming from the college level, dude. What what is that like? I mean, if you if you have a good routine which I'm sure he does, and he's got so much money invested in him that I'm sure a nice routine was laid out for him. Um, I mean, I, I my prediction for tomorrow is I bet he goes like four innings. Four innings? Yeah, four innings, like seven Ks, three hits, two walks, and one run. One run? Yeah. You know what, dude? That sounds about – that sounds really good. That sounds yeah, really bad. good. Four innings, yeah. Just get get a little taste of it. I bet he'll go like sixty something pitches. Okay. And, I mean, they now with all the data out there, like uh, a Strasburg guy. I mean, he had an unbelievable career, but when they gave him the ball, it was like, here you go, go yeah. give us hundred pitches. Like, I think they're gonna protect their investment. But I could be wrong. Maybe he goes six innings. Maybe he goes seven. I don't know. But I just don't see that happening. Yeah, I, we'll see, man. It'll be fun to watch. I'll be tuning in there. Um, yeah, maybe, dude, maybe this is, you know, maybe this helps the Pirates out a whole bunch. They started off pretty hot. I think they were cooling off a little bit. So that Jerry Jones guy. Yeah. You've been talking about him for a yeah, like couple a episodes, bro. Been talking about him for a little bit now. So that'd be cool. That'd See be what good. happens. It's got five, talking about five pitches, right? Well, I mean, this is good for baseball. Like I couldn't tell you the last time I was like excited to watch a game i watch baseball because i love baseball if it's on i'm like oh sweet and i still have so many ex-teammates or guys i played against that are in the big leagues now so i love tuning in yeah. but like i'm excited to watch a debut like nothing against uh holiday but i didn't tune into that no nah, neither did i yeah i was like cool but with skeins like this is this is big time news yeah they're talking about you know this guy being a once in a decade type talent on the mound. Um, yeah. Like words straight from the uh, Pirates front office member. I love, he just grips and rips it. <laughs> yeah. Dude. finishes like his arm like recoils and he's like, yeah, he's, he's a bad like, man. Sit down. Yeah. He's a bad man, dude. So he's I'm big. excited to see that. Yeah, he's I found some videos of him hitting bombs at Air Force and LSU, but he was like a Shohei type of player. And who knows? I don't know if he would have stuck with that, if he could have been a, Two way guy. I don't. I don't think he hit for like average or mm. anything like that. He just he could he do crush it. a ball. Yeah, yeah. big time athlete. So we'll see how he goes. Four innings, one earned run is is what the prediction is. Seven strikeouts, two walks. Okay. I just came up with that. I, I wish I maybe would have thought about, thought about it a little bit. bit more. Yeah, but it sounds okay. Okay, I'm gonna write it down and I'm gonna post it all over social media. So we're gonna hold you accountable to. Dude, what if there was like a bet you could do on that and like predict his line perfectly? That's well, a that kind of that's something that we might talk about here with uh, Ipe and and Shohei with what they got going on. So that kind of segues perfect, yeah, into one of our uh, our next stories. Bobby, Bobby P is in the chat. Bobby, what's going on, brother? How are the uh, how how are your Diamondbacks doing, Bobby? PXG, Pre- appreciate that's our PXG you, PXG guy. Yeah, dude. Appreciate you showing up here on Friday. Um, dude, so Shohei Otani and his interpreter, 
who had stolen all this money for him. As we know, we saw everything kind of unfold, that crazy fucking storyline. Um, they're going to be getting their new hit drama TV series coming up here shortly, bro. Uh, to Dude, it's going to be scripted, right? I don't know how they're going to go about doing it, but it's a dude, uh, it's, a, it's a leadership team that has directed and produced other hit shows. Uh, and so it seems like they got their head on pretty straight, bro. What do you got on this? Did you see that I wrote down there? Like, this is so America. Yes, like absolutely. That, that happened like weeks ago, a month ago, whatever it is. But it's already like, hey, let's get this. Let's, let's make some money off this. This is a good story. The scandal. Like America loves a scandal. TMZ, all that bullshit. You know, like I'm sure it'll be entertaining. And if it's done well, I'd love to know more information about it if it's accurate. Because um, it is it's a messed up story i still don't even like i don't know what's true i don't i don't either bro so i mean obviously here uh an affidavit filed by federal authorities so i mean they can't fabricate on that right you would hope an affidavit filed by federal authorities on april 11th stated mizuhara stole more than 16 million from otani over a two-year period and uh, Mizuhara was averaging 25 bets per day, dude, ranging from 10 bucks to 160 grand. Ooh, per wager, he was doing that 10 bucks I mean, to 160 large. And no, Otani's got money, but like, what does that equal out to? Like 20 bucks for us or something, or hundreds, hundreds of dollars? Like, it, I, I don't know, dude. So, how do you not notice that? That's what I'm saying. And so, they got, um, they got like the balance. They got a spreadsheet of everything. They pieced everything together. Um, the authorities pieced it together and it showed a net balance of negative 40.678 million bucks. So Ipe stole the money from Otani, made all these bets and made 142 million bucks in winnings over his like two or three year period. Yeah but lost 183 million. So he is negative 40.678 million dollars, dude. And he's going to jail. Yeah, that's bad. And he's going to jail. So does legally the Shohei Otani he gets like retribution, right? So I guess that's part of his like Ipe, that's part of his whole deal, right? He's got to pay back at least something. I don't know how yeah, but it... how's he he got any money? Well, Otani's got all this money deferred. Remember all this money that yeah. he's got deferred? So, I mean, I, I don't know how it's going to look, dude, but we'll see. That's a lot. 40.678. And was he doing it? Like, the, you know, now there's like legal sports books, FanDuel, DraftKings, ESPN Bet. Was he doing it like with the mafia or something? Like, were people coming to like break his legs? I don't know. I, we, we, I think we talked about it. Yakuza? A little a little while back yeah i was thinking it's, i didn't you know no it was all here so this this like i think it was in california this guy got tied in with another minor yeah. leaguer kind of back in the day got him he, they got fucked up you know what i mean so i don't i don't know uh i'm, saying, I'm looking forward some, to seeing how this comes out it's, i think it was some illegal sports book illegal yeah 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 illegal but it started book. with like DraftKings and fucking like yeah. public bets and stuff it just it steamrolled eventually to this dude in California. I mean, it's a horrible, horrible addiction. But you know, he was like, "Hey, I'm show his interpreter. Like, I'm good for it. Like, let me, yeah, drop 150 G's on a bet." And the bookie was using that to market and illegally bring in other fucking dudes. They're like, "Yo, Shohei Otani's interpreter is like gambling here using this guy's his bookie. Why wouldn't I?" That's he was using that for his advantage too, bro. That's the yeah. crazy part. It's wild. That's still like a big market, even with like legal stuff. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything's tied to gambling. Everything, everything's tied to sports gambling, dude. Um, but, you know, kind of getting away from that, dude, you, you had sent over a pretty cool story um, about minor league ownership and, you know, some big events coming up in the country music space at one of the minor league stadiums that we had, we had played at Yeah, Fresno. So the Fresno Grizzlies, I remember um, 
dude, it, it used to be hot as shit there when we would play. It felt like playing in a microwave. But they're bringing um, country music star. Who is that? Rhett. Thomas Rhett. Yeah, Thomas Rhett, dude. Who I don't know anything about country music, bro. But there's this ownership group that is taking over. They are a titan in the space, and they are becoming like the biggest, baddest most powerful baseball ownership group in minor league baseball, dude. And they're bringing, you know, events and upgrades and, you know, bigger, better features to minor yeah, league ballparks, man. And it's if crazy. you think about it that way, like it's a, if you can buy or own a minor league team, that's a free venue, not a free cause you're paying for it, but like, it doesn't have to just operate as a baseball stadium. Yeah. I mean, you do all these events there, concerts, shows, swap meets, whatever you want. And I think these people are thinking that way, but there's something legally where they can only own like 54 total. Or 14 something. in each league. So, yeah, 14 so in each league. the rules were expanded. You could only own one. Yeah. Right. And then it was like, I forget there was another ownership group that had seven and the, the rules expanded. So you can own 14 in each league. I guess it's up to, up to 52 or something like that. So um, yeah, diamond baseball holdings, dude. They are becoming the most powerful. If they've already became the most powerful, uh, minor, yeah, yeah, minor league ownership group, dude. Thirty-three teams it owns in its portfolio or is currently in the approval process, bro. Thirty-three, dude. So That's yeah, fourteen in each league, dude. So in the article that was talking about it, Sam Sam Burnaby uh, from the Iowa Cubs was kind of talking about like, yeah, these guys come in, they buy the team. So uh, Sam had sold the team, right? And it, it's it's now under their ownership, but they, they kind of retain the employees, the ownership group. Um, you know, they, they keep that same feel. They want to keep the uh, the authority figures in place, keep it running smoothly. They just want to dr- like generate more revenue, drive up, uh, you know, more money, man. It makes business sense, dude. So it was cool to see an old Iowa Cub tie in there with Sam, dude. So yeah. Um, yeah, keep the same ownership groups, just make more money. That's the philosophy. Diamond Baseball Holdings, dude, pretty badass to see. Yeah, it's really cool. I played Saint for some Paul. teams that were done very well, and I played for some teams that, you know, you're picking through your uniform at the beginning of the year, like, I got holes in my pants. Yeah, dude. You know, and the promotions and double A AA and triple A are, are fun, and the events and stuff you do, but the lower levels, if they can get – that kind of feeling and I mean, we'll transition a little bit into this, but now players are making a, a respectable living for their, their time playing. And I mean, like shuttles are now provided housing is provided, which is crazy, dude, yeah. which is, you know, we didn't have is, any of that. So the pay scale, yeah, the minor league pay scale, right. There was a chart. I don't know if you can bring that up on your, on, can you share on yours? If you have the yeah, capability should, to do that. Be able to. So the minor league pay scale, bro, was, in 2019, when I was in AAA in Tacoma, every two weeks I was clearing under a thousand dollars as a 27 year old in AAA Tacoma, right outside Seattle, where everything's really expensive. I'm a 27 year old dude clearing 970 bucks yep. every two weeks. It's fucking wild. Now these guys are these guys are making more than three times that. Right? It's wild. Housing you provided. See, you can see here. Weekly salary salaries. Then we got off season, like spring training, they get paid a week. That's, that's off season camps, off season at home. So they're making money at home. So they only they don't get paid for two months out of the year in yeah. December and January, which is a dead period, right? Yeah, yeah. right here. In season housing provided, transportation provided. They get hey, look more at this. meal money. Oh, this is monthly. Man. I think, right, minimum annual salary, rookie level, in-housing provided by team, transition to ballpark, two buses. Like, that's something like in AAA, sometimes we only have, we always have two in AAA, I believe. Yeah. But in AA, it's one bus and two meals per day, 30 bucks per diem. They can control their NIL, health insurance yeah. for two, three months after release. Dude, so they, they're, they're, stuff is just skyrocketed it's times three right it's it's times three you know it's triple what it was for us bro it's yeah. crazy i'm glad things are going that way i'm glad I that said i was a little butter 
Yeah, I mean, there definitely is that, bro. Think about like the fucking scratching and clawing to just make it through. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. That's I stayed with anyone that would let me sleep on their couch. I'm not kidding. I slept on mattress toppers, and we talked about that. And two bedroom apartments with seven people. I mean, it's part of the grind, and it's part of what made me who I am today, and get that perspective. But who knows if? I mean, I didn't have the ability that some some guys do out there. Like, I didn't have skeins type stuff, but, like, if I didn't have to work some shitty off-season, off-season job or seven of them or something just to go down there and show face, like, what if I was comfortable? And what if my my mornings were spent, you know, lifting and then my afternoons were spent recovering? And, like, I would go straight from lifting to living spaces in Scottsdale, Arizona and sell furniture. Yeah. Guys yeah. would all go golfing, and I was like, well, I got to go to work. And they're like loser <laughs> you, know, you know what i mean it would have been it would have been nice to know that i was kind of taken care of i guess for sure for sure bro it's crazy to see now uh glad things are going that way right it would have been dope to uh have made that type of money in the minor leagues i'm not complaining because towards the end of my career is when I started being able to make some more money and do yeah, you made it, man, dude. It just, you feel it. You feel it, bro. The paychecks make a world of difference. You I mean, know that's I mean? like, we didn't necessarily fight like in court or anything, anything, but like, that's, we went through that shit. So these new guys could live a little better life. Yeah. I'm that's a good okay, way man. of looking at it. You're welcome guys. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sick though for them. Happy for him. Is what it is. Would have been cool to experience, dude. But glad to see that things are going that way. And there's like ownership groups, like the most powerful ownership group now in baseball, uh, minor league baseball, this diamond baseball holdings that cares about the trajectory of yeah, minor league baseball. Of. Yeah, dude. I mean, people don't even realize, too, you sign a lease at an apartment and then you get sent up. And then you got to find someone to fill your lease. That's like, hey, you this kid gets sent up. I don't even know him. I'm calling him like, hey, I got a room for you. Just pay me the the rent. That's a fucking nightmare. You know? While I'm all across shit, the country. Yeah, all your shit is still there. And you got to ask the club, you, you tip him 50 bucks. Like, hey, send it to me. Nightmare. Like, people don't realize that that's what goes into this. And then you're trying to figure out how to close that lease you had. Like, now that's all taken care of by the team. It's wild, brother. It's wild. Um, we got somebody that's that's yeah, yeah. We got somebody that's transitioning out of baseball. Dude, I'm excited about this. Actually, so am I. So reading into this, listening to the you know the stories, kind of covering this. So Monte Harrison is leaving the game, right? 28 year old. He was a outfielder. Uh, played with the Marlins and the Angels in the big leagues. Yeah. Uh, he was a former like four star prospect, four star recruit. Um, in 2014, he was taken in the second round by the Brewers. Um, in the 2014 draft for 1.8 million dollars, and so he loved football. Decided to go to the baseball route. It looks like it paid off, right? He made it to the top, but he's 28 years old, still a physical specimen, and he is now walking on. At Arkansas football, dude. So a respected SEC program that might not have been at the top of the list in the SEC, but still a SEC football program nonetheless. What do you got here, brother? And uh, are you expecting any type of like big impact here? So I don't, I don't know how he'll transition, but this is a true story, and this is what I'll say about Monte Harrison. He came to Albuquerque. In 2018, I believe, when he was with New Orleans, uh, baby cakes, mm. and I was throwing—I think I was shagging—and he was maybe like getting healthy, rehabbing, doing some jogging and stuff. More of the story: he was on the field, running around, and I was like staring at him in awe. I had Where never you... seen like a specimen of a of a man like that up close and personal. Really. Dude, he is like if you had to design like a freak athlete, like he looked like a mannequin at Dick's Sporting Goods. Did he? 
Yeah, he really. Was, yeah, he was walking around. He was huge, put together, solid, good looking dude. Everything about him, I was just like, is this like this isn't fair? And I was remember I was like throwing balls and just watching this guy run, and I was like, that's God. special. Yeah, I think he, I mean he could hit okay. I think he played the outfield okay, but I could see his athleticism. Maybe he's a little on the tail end, obviously, but. I mean, there's look at Brandon Whedon. Um, he was a second round pick in baseball out of high school, out of Oklahoma City or Tulsa. I don't know. Made it to like high A. Said, nah, he was 24, I think. Mm. And he went back and walked on, I believe, to Oklahoma State it's for football. Time. Yeah, quarterback. Became a first rounder. <sighs> the quarterback was drafted at like 26 or 27, I think. That's wild. Played almost 10 years in the NFL. Dude, so I, man, I'll, I'll be pulling for him. So th- this is a pretty cool story. Like when I, when I was 28, like nice guy too. Yeah. when I was 28 years old, I felt like I was in my prime, dude. Yeah. Still am. Still am. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, still am, dude. What? But like when I was 28, you know, I felt like I was, I could do it, bro. It no, would I be swear. awesome to do that. I, after awesome. I saw him, I swear back then it was like 2018, and I swear I googled Monte Harrison shirtless. <laughs> I just oh, wanted wow. to see if there was any, any pictures. I dude, I've never seen. He was cut from granite. Okay. Like he's a he's a stud. He looked like an action figure superhero. Yeah, I was like, that's not I a real it. human. Dude, well, it. I'm I'm gonna be pulling for him. I will be tuning in to watch to see how he does. I hope he gets some playing time. That's a serious. That's a serious like team. It's a serious program, um, and you know a, a serious conference, bro. So I hope it all works out. He'll be paying his way from the money that that he made in baseball. So that's cool to see, man. Doing it right, uh, doing it big. Wishing him the best, dude. Uh, that'll that'll be cool, bro. So yeah, kind of closing it out here on the nine hole podcast, dude, with some closer talk, bro. So. Ooh, nice. The, I like that. the A's, yeah. So the A's have obviously undergone a whole lot of I, what do I what do I scrutiny? Say? Scrutiny is a great word, bro. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. A scrut? Undergone a whole lot of scrut <laughs> just with this whole leaving Oakland thing and we're gonna find a home and being in talks with Las Vegas, it not working out, them kind of getting deflected over to Sacramento. Man, so they've been under a whole lot of scrutiny this year, like you said. And so it seems like things aren't necessarily going their way for them right now as well. So last year, dude, they had the worst record in the major leagues with a 50 and 112 record. That is brutal. And I get it. Everybody goes through these tough times, these tough stretches. You got to rebuild. But. You know, it is what it is, man. So now they're, it's not like they're off to a hot start. They're 18 and 21, dude, below 500. And they, they have a really, 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 really good pitcher in Mason Miller, who was their closer. He's 25 years old, bro. And uh, he's, he's garnering a whole lot of trade interest, bro. But it comes with a steep asking price. So maybe at the trade deadline, you see somebody kind of swoop in come in, try to take this guy out of there. So the Oakland Athletics are now going to be leaving Oakland at the end of this year and transitioning over into Sacramento. They could be starting off on the fucking wrong foot on the back end of this deal with just like their best player going, right? If they deal them at the trade deadline, dude, think about that. You're starting over at a new place with kind of like a barren a barren bullpen, dude. Is that going to be tough? Do you think somebody's going to try to swoop in and get this guy, and how are the Dodgers going to be when they get Mason Miller at the trade deadline? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, that's that's probably what will happen. But I don't. I mean, it, this sounds kind of mean, I guess. But you know, things are a little weird when your best player on your team is a closer. Yeah, I don't. I mean, guys pitching one inning. Every couple yeah. days or whatever, like not closing, not closing. I mean, dude, you're eighteen and twenty one. You know, you know what he's mean? got like, eight saves. Oh. I mean, he's nasty. Oh. He's he's great, but like if you if you think about it, like yeah, the dude's coming in. Even like for the Dodgers, 
Like a guy comes in and a closer, I think, is a very pivotal role in the game. But like, you look at like the wins above replacement and all that stuff. Like, you can't tell me that a Nolan Arenado is not more valuable than a a one inning closer. So for... this dude, yeah, he's played in the third of the games, bro. So they've played yeah. in thirty nine games. He's he's pitched in thirteen of them. Um, obviously, he's got uh, you know one point one ERA, dude. He's nasty. He's striking out everyone, but yeah. But dude, that is uh, yeah, you're right. That is kind of tough to have your best player, your best. And they're asking the for field. the keys to your house and your car and your everything for a closer. And yeah, I think it's an important position, but he's not a he's not a franchise, you know, reforming guy. So, so the, the A's are looking for someone to maybe rebuild yeah, in a new with, spot in Sacramento yeah. with Mason Miller as the trade piece, right? If if they can offer the Dodgers something for Mason Miller, a bunch of prospects to take them into Sacramento and start kind of this rebuild era. I mean, that, I dude, I could see that happening. That's actually a pretty solid idea, isn't it? Yeah. I like That'd that. That'd be cool. That's That'd people be cool. don't realize either too. It's like whoever's closing for the Dodgers right now, Mason Miller gets traded over. <coughs> bless you. Oh, bless you. Uh, Mason Miller gets traded over. He's a new closer. Like, yeah. <laughs> Your job could be like that. It's crazy, bro. They're always trying to replace you, even when they're not trying to replace you. Yeah. No, I think they probably do end up getting him. He'd be like to the Dodgers. That makes sense. He's like the final piece, and they probably have the depth to be like, "Oh yeah, here's two prospects we have. Here you go. Thanks, dude. That would be cool to see. I look. Obviously, the the Dodgers have been doing well, but I would like to see the. If we're gonna do it, if we're gonna go half in on the uh, on the juggernaut, the you know hoard all the best players, pay them, get like, be cool to see, whatever, whatever. I didn't want the Dodgers to do great, but I mean, I guess if this makes sense, why not have all the best players on the field? Well, you, you said, uh, what's his name? The new Japanese pitcher wasn't gonna do very well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Yaku- doing right. Yamamoto, he's doing good. Yeah. He's doing well. His first yeah. start, dude, just. Dude, Dodgers are 26 and 13. Is that good? Yeah. Is that even that good, you think? No, I think they're leading the league in wins. That's wild, bro. That's wild, bro. White Sox suck. Yeah, they're tough, man. Miami sucks. Miami's 10 and 29. Rockies. Rockies have the worst record in baseball. What are they? 9 and 28. Stinks. Well... It'll be cool to see at least some good baseball tomorrow with uh, the Paul Skeens debut against the Cubs, man. That'll be cool. I, I'm thoroughly looking forward to that. Uh, enjoy seeing some good pitchers matchups, dude. But that's all I got. That's all I got here, dude. We'll uh, plan on running it back again next Friday. Get that's around. a routine, though. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Bobby P., appreciate you uh, making it part of your routine as well. Getting in here. Um David, you got anything else, brother? No, I'm just live just long and prosper. That's it, baby. Leonidas, dude, he said it best. Appreciate that you, was, David. That was Spock. Yeah. Leonidas is is that from Troy? No, that's 300. Spock, dude. I don't Brad know. Pitt. Brad Pitt, baby. I appreciate you, David, for uh, for being here, brother. This was great, dude. Appreciate everybody here for tuning in. We will see you guys next week.